Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Well, you, I agree. You ran at my deputy, though. I'm sorry. Hey, stop! Don't, 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 don't. From a guy who started fighting everyone in a zoo. Babe, we got one running! Taser, taser! Get him! Get him! Put your hands behind your back! Hey, wait! Hands behind! Stop! Stop! To someone who couldn't handle a hotel room. Don't touch me. I need him to touch me. Stop. And to a couple who stripped their way through fighting a cop. Hey, just shut the fing door. Hey! That's another spot. Get him down. Shut that door now. Shut the door. Here are the four cases that will tell you why picking fights with a police officer is never a smart move. On the night of June 27, 2023, officers got a call about a disturbance at Spirit Airlines in Orlando, Florida. They were called to the Spirit Airlines ticket counter due to a large group of aggressive passengers, around 200 Spirit Airlines. Passengers were lined up, many visibly upset. Without wasting any time, the officers quickly arrived at the scene. <laughs> You crazy, y'all gotta stop lying. No, you guys are lying. Yeah, see, we deserve this shit. The trouble began when passengers at the Spirit ticket counter started yelling at the staff. Some passengers even went behind the counters. They explained that if the disruptive behavior continued, the passengers would be refunded and trespassed from the airport. Despite these warnings, the situation did not improve. Ma'am, if, if we continue this on, what's gonna happen is they'll refund your money, you'll be trespassed from the airport. We're not gonna play this game where screen up people. I under, listen, listen, stop, stop, I stop. Can go to stop. stop. I'm done being yelled at this whole time, and so are they. You just told Listen, me. I got it on camera. Good, good, good for you. Yelling all day. In, in a few minutes, they'll refund your money, and we'll trespass you from the airport. If that's what you want, we will do that. We are not going to play this game all night. A woman in the crowd made a scene like she was auditioning for a soap opera. She was tired, frustrated, and convinced that the whole world needed to hear about it. The officers repeatedly stated that if she continued her behavior, then it would lead to trespassing from the airport. Why are we keep doing this? I'm getting, I'm getting the land side over here. We're getting Hey, so he's waiting for a letter. He went to go get it. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to, hold that, hold that, hold that. Listen, I understand that. I'm trying to sit that. Stop, stop. No, I'm talking. I'm done. I'm talking. Right now, Goa is coming here. Remember from Goa, when people start acting up, I'm just saying this because we need to get under control. People keep acting up and threatening people. I'm not saying you're doing that, but it's happening right now. I'm coming over here, and then when that starts happening, one after another, we're gonna trespass one at a time out of the airport. All attempts to de-escalate the situation failed again. One of the passengers, Edward Harrison, expressed his frustration by accusing others of lying. Despite a lot of warnings, Edward and others continued to act aggressively. The 41-year-old man then pushed on a plexiglass barrier and got into a woman's face. This made the situation even worse. Listen, the counters, the counters are closed for right now. The counters are closed now. The counters are closed for now. Oh man. Listen, why are we why are we why are we on this stuff right now? Listen, listen, listen everybody's everybody can't act right now. So, we're, we're closed now for a temporary. Harriston then argued with a spirit employee. Minutes later, he literally reached behind the counter, grabbed a computer keyboard, and began pressing buttons. A police officer immediately noticed this and grabbed Edward's arm to prevent any damage. But this seems to have hurt Edward's ego, so he grabbed the officer's arm back. The idiot thought he would square up with a cop and get away with it. In an attempt to create distance, the officer pushed Harriston, but Harriston grabbed the officer's hands, lowered his body, and began pushing the officer backward. Both men fell to the ground. Harriston then put one of his arms around the officer's neck in a chokehold, restricting the officer's airway and making it difficult for him to breathe. Fortunately, other officers arrived on time and intervened to rescue the officer. Hey, you choking me out. Hey, get this dude off me, man. Get this dude off me, man. <coughs> Now you gotta place to stay tonight. Be secure. Now you gotta 
place to stay. After being told to leave, Harrison resisted, claiming his leg was broken. He said he was choked and accused the officers of using too much force, all of which was caught on camera. At one point, he started exaggerating, saying he felt like he was seeing stars and got dizzy. As the officers tried to gain control, Edward continued to resist, and a scuffle broke out. After the incident, Edward was taken to the hospital for evaluation and charged with three felony counts of battery on a law enforcement officer. He was charged with attempted first-degree murder of an officer. Not only that, he was also charged with resisting arrest with violence and one misdemeanor count of disorderly conduct. His bail was set just over fifty thousand dollars. He's getting charged that attempted murder too. I'm gonna put that I'm on you. Mug, you, Bro, me. you made you me pass out. Me. You choked me out you and made me pass out. You You're getting that attempted so murder charge. See you there. Alright, uh, we'll see you in court, man, bro, and I push his hand away, he's like, don't f touch me, and he hit me, and they're like, bro, do not do that, I was like, you need to step away right now, and I put my hand like this, and he hit my hand, and he pushed me, and then we just went down. What's up, dude? Alright, cool. He choked me out good. This lady said, like, this guy's trying to grab your gun or something crazy? Oh, he choked, he, he made me pass out. Oh, jeez. He, cho he choked me out to where, like, I was, I couldn't see anything anymore. Oh, okay. This guy, <clears throat> this guy claims he broke his leg. The one that's 1015. He was reached behind the ticket counter, like they were screaming at each other, and I was like, all right, we're closed, everything's closed now. And he was like slamming their keyboard, right? And I was like, I pushed his hand, I was like, bro, you can't do that back here. He's like, don't touch me, he did a hit. And I was like, step back, he me right. doing that, he did a hit again, and then we locked up. And I was like, now you're going to jail. And he, he's a big boy, he leaned yes, in. Is. Moving on to the next case, we have Michael Jerome Brown, who caused unnecessary chaos at Zoo World. Lucky for him, he got a first-hand lesson in the consequences of his actions. But before diving in, a quick like would be greatly appreciated. Now let's jump right in. On May 10th, 2022, officers from the Bay County Sheriff's Office in Florida responded to a 911 distress call from Zoo World in Panama City Beach. Hey, we got one running! Taser, taser! Get him! Stop! Hey, wait! Hands behind! Stop! Stop! The zoo had reported an erratic individual causing disturbances. According to employees, the man, identified as Michael Jerome Brown, had attempted to enter the zoo without paying. What made it even worse was that he had assaulted two patrons and three zoo employees. What's going on? Okay, you already attacked. I don't know where he's at. Four, six, nine, step it up. Jenny, the uh, the What's he wearing? He's wearing a gray, uh, gray Fearing for others' safety, employees kept Brown isolated. Upon arrival, the officers were quickly directed by zoo employees to the scene of the incident. They also checked the CCTV footage where he was seen shoving a woman. We're in the back by the lion exhibit. He's like attacking us. This gentleman right here. Okay. He's really like physically attacking people. Hey, back up! Hey, we got one running! Taser, taser! Get him! Throw his hands behind your back! Hey, wait! Hands behind! Stop! 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 The officer tried to arrest Brown, but he kept fighting back like a frickin' zombie. The officers had no choice but to use a taser to subdue him. Despite this, Brown managed to wrestle away and even tried to grab one of the officer's guns. In the chaos, a female officer got accidentally shocked by a taser because the wires got tangled around her. Clearly, Michael just showed all the animals in the zoo that he belonged with them, locked away in a cage. <laughs> Cut that shit out. Stop resisting. Put your head by your Put that shit out, bro. What shit? What shit? Where my wife? He's not secure. More officers worked together to pin Brown to the ground. He claimed that one of the zoo workers was his wife, as if that mattered, but the employees quickly denied it. Brown continued to resist arrest aggressively. He also threatened to kill the deputies, but the officers maintained their composure and kept him pinned down. Soon enough, they called for backup. He's not secure. He's not secure. Where my wife? Where my wife? Hey. Let's Let her go with me. This can go two ways. Uh huh? 
We need at least another unit. Not the damage. Where am I? 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 Where
aggressive behavior coming from their room. Concerned, the manager and security went to the room to address the issue. They found the lady and her companion intoxicated, taking the drama to a new level. Initially, the manager tried to handle the situation discreetly by verbally warning the lady about her behavior and reminding her of the hotel's noise policies. <laughs> However, the lady's response was reportedly dismissive. This prompted the manager to issue a formal trespass notice. The trespass notice meant that the lady and her companion were no longer welcome on the hotel premises. Along with that, the officers asked the lady to leave as well. Despite the clear warnings from the manager and instructions from law enforcement officers who arrived on the scene, the lady refused to comply with the order to vacate. Unaware of the seriousness of the situation, she made the mistake of attempting to get physical with the officer. Ma'am. You need to leave. Hi, police! You need to leave. You need to leave. Oh, no. They asked you to leave. Oh, that's so sassy. Ma'am, they asked you to leave. Alright, so you need to go. You're being trespassed. I'm not leaving until you show the video of what they've done to you. Trespass me. I'm not trespassing. I paid for this. The woman said that she wasn't trespassing and that she had actually paid for the room. Moreover, she mentioned that she owned the district attorney in New York. Little did she know that this by displaying such entitled behavior, she was digging a hole for herself. Even during the arrest process, the lady showed sporadic behavior. At one point, she attempted to touch the officer's equipment, which prompted a firm but controlled response from the officers to secure her arms behind her back and complete the arrest without further incident. I own the district attorney in New York. You show what they've done to me. You practically went to go back and show the video. Oh, show the swap. Touch me. I need him to touch me. Stop. Dude, you're so on time because I have a fucking, fucking We're after dinner. Right, do you see who I call? Her first, though. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm gonna get her first really quick. What? I'm gonna get her first off really quick. Go ahead, Chelsea. Going to jail. I like you. Give a f if I go to jail. You live in jail. You fat f***ing face. Chubby face. Chubby cheese. No, give me one. I don't fucking care. You stab fucking cheese, chubby cheese face. You will when you get there. Yeah, you will when you're making her poison. Thank you. Sarasota County Jail. He's a bad f***ing Don't get in trouble with this bad Don't talk to him here. Wait till you find out I'm out in an hour. I know every fucking gets the car while the lady was being taken to jail, she acted crazy all the way. She was then transported to the local county jail for processing. At the jail facility, she underwent standard intake procedures, which included a thorough search for any items or substances that could pose a risk to herself or others. This process, conducted by corrections officers, ensured compliance with safety protocols and the preservation of the jail's security standards. Don't touch me. You know what? I have a broken shoulder, so do it again. Try it again! Break my shoulder open again! When you're done, fat face. What about you? What are you? Oh my god! Look at this one! Shut the f up! You know what they're, hey, do you know what they're doing on this I don't care. Of course you don't, because you're a cop. I don't give a f. You just want your points. That's the end of the month. Let's be in poor people. Well, they're raping girls well, I, I, I told him to start this way because he was dispatched. Uh, they're raping girls! Oh, you jump back, fuck! Uh, oh, what is this stuff? This is burning. Trespass. Yeah, she didn't leave, so. No, why? Jail. I don't care. I'm gonna take off my pants and show my vagina. Oh, I don't want to see that today, please. Returning back to the scene, the officers had a good conversation with a man who explained how things went down at the hotel. Uh, that depends on what her bond's gonna be. Jail's gonna determine that. So she can bond out. That's that's gonna be on her. Well, but I asked that because she's here with her mother. Right. And right now her mother is also a little bit too. I don't know how drunk she is, but okay. she's at least not right to drive. Um, the room was in the mother's name. Okay. So my main goal was removing her. Of course. So the mother, by point, she can stay. Sure. You know, as before. Sure. But I don't want to make. I want to make sure that. that if I don't have to kick out the mother mm. because she'll be in overnight, mm. then I don't displace her. Gotcha. She's not allowed back here. 
And she knows that, so if she ends up getting out and comes back, then she'll be going to jail back again for that. As the night progressed, the lady's mother expressed concern about her well-being and eventual release from custody. Officers explained the process of determining bond eligibility and reiterated the consequences of violating the trespass order upon release. They reassured the companion that the subject's status would be updated as soon as feasible, pending further administrative review by the jail authorities. We have a, a female in custody. She was from the A-loft. The manager wanted her trespassed. She refused to leave. We got there. We told her she was trespassed, asked her to leave. She refused to leave. And we used diminutive force to to place her into custody, so taking her to the jail right now. Moving on to our last case, watch how a couple managed to mess up so many things that one of them ended up getting arrested. On August 27th, 2022, police in Superior, Wisconsin, got a call from a strip club about a couple causing trouble. A 19-year-old woman and her boyfriend, Jason, had tried to enter the club. The woman was denied entry because she was underage, but surprisingly, she was told she could only enter as a worker, so she applied and got hired as a dancer. After making a lot in tips, Jason decided to leave and took all her money, forcing her out of the club. The club staff called 911, and officers found the couple nearby. When officers separated and questioned them, the woman was crying because Jason had taken her money. She was also scared that she might go to jail for stripping, but still, she was more worried about Jason. Hey, what's going on? Okay, ma'am, you wanna come over here and talk to me? Ma'am, okay, come here. I'm here. What's, what's going on? Everything I made at the strip club is ripped up and gone. Okay, what's, what's going on? Can you please be nice? Okay, okay. I'll talk to him. Just look at me. Look he was me. upset because I was stripping. Okay. And everything I made, he ripped up. Okay. Who's he to you? That's my boyfriend. Am I going to get arrested for stripping? No. No, there's nothing illegal as long as you're doing it in an establishment that's licensed, which they are. Exactly. What's your name? No. No, no, no. Look, look at me. Ma'am, look at me. Don't look at him. Don't oh, he's going to get arrested. No, 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 no. Can you just tell him to call me? Ma'am. Meanwhile, another officer asked Jason for his ID and noticed he had his girlfriend's purse. When the officer reached for it, Jason got defensive and made a punching motion toward the officer. In self-defense, the officer punched Jason in the face and proceeded to arrest him. Jason could have been released if he cooperated, but he didn't. I'm okay. Step the f please back. Please do not, please do not push Step me. Step the f out of that back. Do not swear at me. You're an officer of the law. Please do not swear I don't at me. Care. All right, tell me what happened. Nothing happened. Strike her? I did not strike her. Okay. You have an ID? I do. Would you like to see my ID? No. Is that hers? That that's hers. I was carrying it for her tonight. Right. Here's my ID. You can right. look at it. You did not have permission to go in my pocket. You did not ask to go in my pocket. You did not ask to go in my pocket. Get on the ground now! Get on the ground now, dude! Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna get you're gonna Three, two, on your stomach now. On your stomach now. No, he's going relax, to turn. Relax, No, he punched him in the f***ing face Stop. and you know yeah, that's right. Yeah, I sure did, because he, he cocked back on me. Stop. No, he, he what does he have? Yeah. A f***ing gun. Damn. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Am I going to be able to? Stop. Just relax. Just you know that was illegal. You Stop. fucking assaulted Stop. my boyfriend. Stop. He didn't no, it's not me. illegal. That's police brutality, it's sir. It's not police brutality. That is police brutality. Okay, I'm sorry you feel that way. You straight up punched me in the face. Yep, because you swung, you swung back like... He did a f***ing swing at you. He Stop. put his hands up. Stop. I'm sorry, I don't want to get arrested. Stop. Here, we have one in custody. Hey, hey, Go right there. Are you good? I am okay. okay. He has my backpack and my purse. Am I able to get that? Yeah, just hang on. Yep, that's hers. Can you please give that to me? During the arrest, Jason managed to headbutt an officer and accused him of being racist. The situation escalated as officers tried to restrain Jason, who lashed out, attempting to bite, kick, and spit on them. He even headbutted another officer while being put into the patrol car. I feel like you had the need to punch me in the face, though. If you cock back on me and you look like you're about to punch me in the face, yes. I'm going to defend myself. Oh. You're not going to get an upper okay, hand Okay, but on you're me. an officer of the law. You, you have... I have every right to defend myself. Just because right. I wear a badge and I'm a police right, officer does not mean that you get to have the first swing. They f***ing got uh, Jason! Stop. 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 Sorry. Wait, do you understand God, that? Jason. Do you understand that? Right, but just because I'm So a... I will punch you in the face if you... I think you're about to attack me. Will you, will you let me speak? No, I won't. But just because I'm a brown person... Does it has mean, nothing right? to do with who you are. It does have something It doesn't. To do with it doesn't. Are you brown? Stand up. 
You're done, bro. You're done. Watch that. He's trying to head and butt me in the head. Don't cut the bag, just take it off. Shut up. Just take it off. It's not, it's not my bag, it's not my bag. Yeah, Zena, stop. Stop. Oh, there's not. Good. You fing piece of shit. just tried to bite you. We got another squad over here. This guy's trying to bite us and spit on us. We just need to move here. Stop, dude. Don't punch me. Stop. It's illegal. It's not. It's a pressure point. Stop. Punching me in my throat is a pressure point? It's not. It's underneath your chin. Stop. He, he just punched me in my throat. Stop, dude. You're gonna get tased. Tase me then. I have a seizure disorder. You're gonna tase me? Get back. Just go stand over there. Just go. It's all ruined. Just go stand over there. Get back. You can. You gotta sit here. Get back. Yeah. Hey, get her back now. I'm, no, this is legal. No, you That's can step back. I don't. I'm not comfortable with you that close. Well, get them, babe. Get here. them. I'm not the one doing anything wrong. Babe, help me. I can't. You Please, baby, help me. I can do. I'm sorry. Yeah, you did up today. You really did. I'm sorry. <laughs> now you're going to jail for multiple felonies. So that sucks. Felonies? Yep. Felony. You assaulted him. You assaulted a police officer. You started it. You punched him in the face. I did. And you just caused back. the seizures. Because he swung back on me. I was protecting myself. Because you punched me. I was protecting myself. Okay. Right? I have the right to protect myself. Okay? Yeah, that is in the rule book of the laws. Because you punched me. I have the right to protect myself. Set him up. <laughs> Battery, the subtle conduct. Somebody grab the house. His charge. Yeah. You don't need to hobble me. Just shut the f***ing door. Hey! That's another squad. Get him down. Shut that door now. Shut the door. Through this, Jason's girlfriend defended him, accusing the officers of assault. She claimed Jason was defending himself, despite him making the first aggressive move. Amid the chaos, Jason admitted to possessing drugs and consuming marijuana. No, he just had better one of my officers. Yeah, he's the one who punched me. He's better face. two officers. Okay. You need Defending to himself. leave now. If you don't have a criminal complaint, you need to I have leave. A criminal complaint. Against what? You assaulted my boyfriend. Okay, have a good night. Nice. You during transport to jail, Jason screamed uncontrollably and smashed his head against the car window, splitting it open. Once at the jail, he refused to cooperate. Due to his earlier behavior, a spit hood was placed over his head. The local hospital initially refused to take him due to his uncooperative behavior, but another hospital agreed and sent an ambulance. This gentleman, he's cooperative now. I don't know if that's false or if he's now going to remain cooperative. I did call ahead to give Superior ER a heads up, and they obviously were like, I, we don't want him here, I but... Yeah, I tried to give him a courtesy heads up and they were not having it. So why don't you take a look? Maybe he doesn't need to go. I don't know. That way you won't be laying on. Mm, don't. We're gonna make uh, so you don't lay stop on. Stop pushing on me! Stop it! I'm wondering if you should sedate him. Do you think that's necessary? Then absolutely do it. If he's willing to cooperate. We can put him in soft restraints and have it above into the side. And that's, 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 that's not gonna happen. Cooperating. That's not gonna happen. To me. We'll get you under a stretcher. We just don't want you to fight. We don't want you to hurt yourself. Okay? Oh, the we don't have a way to stop that. We're not giving you two tentacles at all. No. It's not really an option, my friend. He's not going to talk. Court documents show Jason had been arrested about five weeks earlier for disorderly conduct and resisting arrest. He had just been released from a 30-day jail sentence a week before this incident. No, I'm not. I, I don't even know if he was deserve, but the county just said that he was just here lodged the other week for the same thing. Really? As Jason was being taken to the ambulance, he protested loudly about his handcuffs being uncomfortable. Meanwhile, officers questioned his girlfriend, who calmly shared her version of events. She declined to press charges against Jason, but wanted to press charges against the officer who punched him. She also mentioned she was homeless and asked who would pay for her damaged bag. Ow! I can't do it anymore! The handcuffs are fine! No, they aren't! They aren't! I can't do this anymore! I got one. I got one. Almost got me. Yeah, I did. 
I saw it. It came over here. It's going to be able to get out of it. Yeah, yeah that extra yeah, stuff I think we can add. You guys just want to follow us to the ambulance? Ow! Ow! You're fine. Stop. The handcuffs are cutting me. You probably would have had better luck if you started cooperating, Jason. Four! Here, here, step out, step out. Can't do this anymore. I got the handcuffs. I got the handcuffs. That's all I'm asking. That's all I'm hey. asking is to loosen hey. the handcuffs just a little bit. Just stop. Just a little bit to loosen can we, the handcuffs. Can we, can we talk? Can we man to man talk? Yes. We have a five minute ride to St. Mary's and those you, cuffs come off. Okay, can And then you, you go into soft restraints. You can make it five minutes. I cannot. It needs some yeah. morphine and some f***ing gab of pain. We're not going to do morphine. Um, we need some morphine. We need some morphine. We need some morphine. There we go. Thank you, sir. We need some morphine. Jason, do you have any known medical issues? I was genuinely worried you were going to hurt yourself. behind to question his girlfriend. So what happened? So we tried getting into the strip club, and I'm not 21, and she was like, well, the only way you can get in if you're a dancer. And I'm like, I'll dance tonight. And my boyfriend's like, if you dance tonight, I'm breaking up with you. I was like, okay. I started dancing maybe 20, 25 minutes later. He runs up on stage, he, and he's just like, he's just snatching my money up. He's cussing me out, talking about I need to get off the stage. And the owner was like, that's not your money, you need to give it back. That's when I was like, okay, I gotta go, I need to calm him down, because he gets angry as As we're walking away, he's, I was like, can I just see my money so I can at least see how much I made tonight? He was like, no, this is more money. I was like, what, more money? I was like, naked. And then he starts ripping up my money, and that's what happened. Is there any charges you want to press against him? No. Okay. I'm literally homeless. So, okay. I mean, like, I get it. Homeless people, we have a weapons. Trust me, I know. I work with homeless people. So they get a little crazy. But that's my only backpack I have. And, um, I'm fucked now. Are you afraid of him? No. You don't think he's going to hurt you? Or your children? Huh? Or your children, if you have children? Oh, God, no. I got okay. children. Do you have any questions for us at the moment? Yeah. Who's paying for my backpack? Well, if you want to make a complaint about the backpack being damaged, no, you can contact I want to our make supervisor. A about the officer. Jason was charged with one count of battery on a law enforcement officer, two counts of attempted battery, and one count of resisting. He was sentenced to 60 days in jail and 30 months of probation to be served simultaneously. All right, I'm searching the rest of the car. Actually, I'll let you check. Yeah, there's that flashlight. I'll stay with him. Can we see some ID? No, what for? I just what's, your, you. what's your probable cause to ask me for ID? It does not have a handicap placard. Read the plate, man. You're, you're, you don't even know what you're talking about. DV, that's disabled veteran plate. We can park in handicapped spots. Let me see some ID, please. If you, want me to, if you want me to be real with you, like, I want you to be real with me for a second. Like, did I make that up? I believe so, officer. Okay, so you want me to just write you the ticket for the stuff that I had to write you tickets for? If you think that I'm lying, like, then we'll go to court and we'll, we'll talk about it then. Step out of the car. I'm not, I'm not stepping out of the car. You're being detained for a burglary investigation, okay, sir? So step no, no, out. no, 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 no. Do you live in the area? I'm not answering questions. I want my lawyer. Okay. okay. Step out of the car. You're being detained right now. The cops wield a ton of power, and it always turns ugly when one of them is a racist. They act like they're untouchable, hurting anyone they want without a second thought. But guess what? When they're caught in the act, they have to face the consequences. So, here are four cases where racist cops got caught on camera. On March 13th, 2018, Officer Kyle Erickson and his partner pulled over Jason Serrano and his friend because of a broken tail light. What started as a routine stop turned serious when one of the cops decided to plant evidence on Jason, making the situation much worse. Immediately, Officer Kyle decided to claim that they could smell marijuana in the car and asked Jason that they needed to search his car. See, usually a civilian can refuse a search. However, if the police have probable cause to believe someone has committed a crime, they can search without consent. Smelling weed on the property is considered probable cause. It's often used by corrupt cops as an easy way to start a search without the suspect's permission or a warrant. Because the car smells like marijuana, so we're gonna check it, all right? Then that's it. Then I gotta make sure everything's good with your end, with the license. If it's just a permit, I'm not gonna give you the summons for it. And I told you, uh, just get the taillight fixed. There's nothing in the car. You'll be good to go. All right? 
If there's something in the car, just let me know now. I appreciate it honestly, okay? Okay, so just hop out. Soon, Jason is on the ground and handcuffed. The cops were unnecessarily brutal with him, and you can clearly see that he's in terrible pain. What's worse is that it took almost 20 minutes for an ambulance to arrive. Realistically, the cops didn't need to use so much force to take him down, but I guess they slipped up and showed their racist side against a civilian. We need to check the car, so I need you to hop out. Okay, I'm getting up. Okay. Yeah, hang on. Once, once he, no, once he checks, he'll hand it back to you. He's got to check. It's our job, bro. Yeah, yeah, I'll get a few. Just uh, let let him check real quick, and then. Okay, well, he's gonna check it. I don't have nothing no, in my jacket. No, no, relax. No, I don't need to this situation is about to escalate for no it. reason. No, because I, don't no, not, relax. I didn't do nothing. It was in the car. No, this is Yo, on me. It's my possession. No, you need to relax. It's my possession. You need to relax. It's my possession. fucking possession. What ain't to David? No, relax. Yo, relax. Sure. It's my possession. Relax, yeah, let me get one additional to 207 Broad Street. No, it's not. Come on. Relax. 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 Back on. Back on. Back on. Relax. Relax. Huh? Yeah. Put that jacket down right now. Put the jacket down. Cuff him up. Yo, leave the jacket there. There's nothing in my jacket. Get off me. Yo, get off of me. You can't get it. The officers know they've hurt Jason, and if the car turns up empty, they'll have unlawfully searched it without a warrant and used excessive force on a civilian. So they somehow had to get lucky and find something illegal to turn Jason and the driver from civilians into criminals. This way they can claim that they were just doing their job. Clearly, this was a desperate attempt trying to cover up their mistake and racist behavior. I bet that they're hoping they find something illegal in the car. They, they don't come in two seconds. I don't know why he was doing that. All right, I'm searching the rest of the car. Actually, I'll let you check. Yeah. There's my flashlight. I'll stay with him. After searching the car for about five minutes and finding nothing, the cops start to get visibly agitated. This is when things take a dark turn. One of the officers gets creative and, without hiding it from his camera, places a small bit of marijuana in the cup holder a spot he's already checked multiple times. The way he does this so openly suggests he's confident it won't come back to haunt him and implies he's definitely done it before. Plus, the way the cops talk to each other makes it seem like this might be a regular part of their routine. Do you have any bees on you? No. It's alright. Yeah. I don't know why he got like that then. Nothing? Yeah. You said it's a truck? I'll get a few. I just gotta check it real quick. I just gotta check it real quick. Uh -huh. Let me check it real quick.
With this fabricated evidence, the cops decided to build a case against Jason. According to reports, the cops claimed that during the stop, they smelled marijuana in the car and some flakes in his jacket. There's flakes everywhere, though. Yeah, no, he had weed. You can see his weed here. Um, I'm gonna check the rest of his jacket, bro. Bring the jacket with you. It's his anyway, so. Put yourself. Yeah, that's probably why he was bugging out because he had a little weed on him. So there's a little marijuana in the jag, which is probably why he was bugging out. But. Bring the jacket with you. It's his jacket, so. Where are we bring it? Yeah, on the air. Advise the condition of the additional. Where are we bring it? Huh? Where are we bring it? We're bringing it back to the house. Okay. There's a hole in that pocket where we found the little flakes of marijuana, so we're going to check the uh, jacket more thoroughly back in the precinct. Let's see the rest of it. Yes, sir. This ultimately led to Jason being taken to trial, where he was charged with marijuana possession, resisting arrest, and obstructing governmental administration. Unfortunately, it took over two years for the body cam footage to emerge, and only then were Jason's charges dropped. Predictably, no charges were brought against the officers. But this type of situation raises an important question. What else has been caught on these cameras that are being hidden from us? This is why some people feel it's important to record their interactions with the police themselves, just like a black police graduate did when he was confronted by officers who were blatantly, racially profiling him. But before we proceed, please hit the like button. Now let's jump straight into it. On June 14th, 2022, Officer Scott Peters stopped a young man who had just graduated from the nearby police academy. A verbal altercation soon broke out between a Joshua police captain and the young officer. The young man, who was wearing his full uniform, including a belt with a loaded gun, started recording the incident for proof. As a certified police academy graduate, he had the right to wear the gear. However, the officers didn't believe him. So, he told them to run his name through T. Cole, an agency that tracks all police officers in Texas. You see some ID? No, what for? I just what's asked your, you. What's your probable cause to ask me for ID? It does not have a handicap placard. Read the plate, man. You're, you're, you don't even know what you're talking about. DV, that's disabled veteran plate. We can park in handicapped spots. Let me see some ID, please. No. Contact T. Cole. Contact them. You saw my name. Call the problem Officer Scott had was that the graduate parked his vehicle in a handicapped spot without displaying a parking permit. However, the young guy clearly explained to the captain that his car has a disabled veteran plate, which is given to veterans who have suffered injuries during their duty. He also pointed out that having this plate allows you to park in handicapped spots without needing a separate permit. However, it seems these officers don't care one bit. Meanwhile, the graduate believes they're approaching him this way because he's a black officer in full gear and they're being racist toward him. You have no, you have no justification of probable cause to run up on me. Yeah, yeah. Who was the academy director when you were there? Contact them. Who is it? Ask him. Navarro College, call him. Well, the reason I did that, Call him. I know they just graduated. Call him. You could have done all of that. You could have done all of that while I was inside. I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. I know. I know about Joshua Bleed BD. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know yeah, what? yeah. 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 When'd you graduate? 
I don't have to tell you anything. Don't ask me any questions because I'm not answering. Yeah. What? Why? 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 You detain you detaining me? Uh, no, no. Then my question is, are you detaining me? Okay, so then don't tell me where to go. No, 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 no. Okay, well, well, you need to find out because I'm going to walk away from you, get in my car and drive away. So you need to find out, find out from him. Do you mind holding on, on leaving until I find out what's going on to see if you're going to ask him? Because that's my captain. He's in charge of this. Okay, he's, 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 not, not. he's not too smart. Because first of all, I mean, first of all, even you know, if I have disabled veteran plate, I can park it in a handicapped spot. Yeah, even you know that. No, 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 they didn't just change that. It's been that way. It's funny how a seasoned officer got schooled by a young man because they had no valid reason to stop him and demand his ID. Hard to believe a police captain with years of service could forget about veteran plates. It'd be one thing if a rookie or new officer made that mistake, but for a captain to mess up like this, it really shows the competency of the whole fricking department. Eventually, the officers come back and tell him he's free to go, but the graduate isn't leaving without saying one last thing. And, and if he's a captain, he should have known that, but he didn't. He just saw, he just saw this, and he saw this, and he wanted to make a problem. That's your reputation there, Joshua. Come on, man. Yes, it is. How many black officers you got? One. One. <laughs> One, right, one. I know, I know. Did you check T. Cole, did you call Navarro? He did call Navarro. Okay, so then, so then, you know, you're feeling small now, aren't you? No, You shouldn't run up on people. You'd have no probable cause. If you wanted to follow me and run my plate, you could have done that. Well, I don't have to talk to you. I don't have to talk to you. That's right, I already told you that. Waste my time and you. You're supposed to be a captain and you don't know the disabled plates have a right to park in a, in a parking spot. And you violating people's rights, huh? running up on them without probable cause. I'm in a uniform doing the same thing for you for free. So what? I don't care what he thinks. I'm a graduate and I have TCO certification. So I don't care what he says. I don't care what he says. I have T Cole you certification. I have T Cole certification. Not. Yes, I do. That's expired. what you checked in. Who says who? My my certification doesn't say expired. You want it to be expired because you see brown skin. Soon after, they got into a verbal fight. Getting into arguments with other uniformed officers, especially after racially profiling one, is definitely not a good look for a police captain. Walk of shame. Walk of shame, Captain. Don't run up on me again. Don't ever you run up on me again. Do you understand? Do you understand? And learn the law. And learn the law. And learn the law. And you better have probable cause before you run up on somebody in uniform. You don't have no reasonable suspicion because I'm on the same side as you. No, you aren't. I have Kiko. I'm a graduate of the police academy. Okay? Just like you years ago. You probably couldn't even pass the test right now. You go. You get going. You get going. You get going. I'm a peace officer, and you had no probable cause. You had no probable cause to stop me. You had no probable cause. I have peace officer certification just like you. So go learn the law before you start teaching young people how to do the job. You're a bad example to the young fella over there. You don't even know the rules of parking. Since the graduate was filming the whole incident, he was able to show the footage to the city manager. That same afternoon, it was revealed that the captain was no longer working for the police department. Now that we've covered a racist police captain, let's move on to the case of Montre, who sued the officer. On July 15, 2018, Montre Little and his friends were stopped by the police. The stop seemed normal at first, but then the cop quickly turned into an evil character, showing how a cop can lie, threaten a civilian, and use corruption and racism to try to force a false confession. At first, the cop asked Montre the usual questions you'd get in a traffic stop. Then, he asked Montre how to start the car, implying he thought it was stolen. If Montre was unfamiliar with the vehicle or struggled to remember how to start it, it could get him into some serious trouble. However, Montre stayed composed and passed this test easily. 
The cop, still not satisfied, decided to take things further by tricking Montre into handing over his car key. What's going on, guys? Not much. What's up? Is this your car? Well, it's a rental right now. My car's been shot. Okay. Did, you, did something break down? Yes, sir. Yeah, so you guys just came from over at the park, right? Yeah, we're just hanging out. That's it? Well, that's what we Is this your car? I just told you my car is in the shop, officer. This is a rental. Okay. How do you start it? What do you mean? I just put my foot on the brake and I put it in drive and I Okay. Drive, officer. Hit the officer not only misled Montre by asking for the keys, but he also suddenly claimed he could smell marijuana in the vehicle. He then turned to the passenger, accusing him of hiding a weapon. Both of these claims, especially the smell of marijuana, are often used to justify searching the vehicle without the owner's consent. The cop's quick actions were extremely suspicious. Asking for the keys without mentioning why implied he had already decided to search the vehicle and was trying to make Montre feel helpless or threatened. Montre was clearly disappointed, and you could clearly see that this wasn't his first time. Officer, Did they give you a key fob or something? Or? Yes, sir. Officer. Like, what does it do? Does it? You see, this this lets you, this actually yeah, lets you know that it's in. Why are you uh, Okay. Do you have any weapons on you or in the car? No, officer. Okay, can I be honest with you? It smells like marijuana in the car, and I can see shake on the ground. And your buddy's given me the your buddy's given me the idea that maybe he's got a gun. You know what I mean? Like that's what I think. How? I don't know. Just the, the way I mean, just the way you're holding yourself, man. Like that's why I'm. That's why we're nervous, man. That's it. It looked like the cop had memorized a textbook on how to act corrupt and trap an innocent person. This was a serious matter for Montre, but the cop was trying his best to be as cruel as he can. The cop also mentioned that Montre's heart was beating fast and that he seemed nervous. But you see, it's perfectly natural for innocent people like Montre to feel anxious or angry in this situation, making it easy for cops to use their nervousness as an excuse to detain them and claim probable cause, which is exactly what this cop did. However, the search uncovered nothing illegal in Montre's car, but the cop still took him to the back of his patrol vehicle, and this is where things start to get shady. Go ahead and step out, Montre. Yep, I just told you why. Three times. Do you want me to recap again? Officer, look, my hands is up. Yep, your hands are up, and now I'm asking you to step out of the car. I gave you my ID. You gave me your ID. Go run it. Yep, I don't want to. I'm not walking away from this car. Officer, can I ask you why? Yep, because I just told you, step out of the car. If you don't want to go to jail, I would, I would, I would expect you to please listen. I mean, I, I told you I'm a cop. Face the car when you step out. Face the car when you step out. Face the car when you step out. Don't flex. Don't flex. I don't know what you're doing, man, but you need to knock that off. Stop pulling on your arms. What's going on, dude? Where are you trying to... What are you doing, dude? Officer, I'm not doing nothing to you. Okay. Well, you're making me think something funny is going on, man. Come on, man. You're not under arrest. You're just, you're you just, just, you just, you're just like, me. you're like pulling away like you're gonna do something silly. And I don't want that. What? Nothing. I what? I'm, I'm not even, I'm not, I'm not even gonna. Okay, well, you're not under arrest, man. We're just trying to figure out what's going on. Okay, sure. Okay, so slide over here. I mean, your heart is thumping, dude. Like, you're beaten. Officer, don't, don't, please don't. Don't what? Have a, what, catch, okay. have a seat. Have a seat. I want to. I think that your buddy has okay. a gun, so I need you to step in the car. You think I my step buddy in, has a gun? He's acting funny. Step in the car, please, officer. If you on. if you don't step in the car, you're going to jail for sure. Okay, that's so. Fine. Step officer, in the car. So step in the car. Listen, listen. I, I don't want. Officer, I don't, I'm not. Officer. I'm done listening. I just told you. I think that your buddy has a gun. Now knock it off.
Montre was clearly being treated unfairly by the cop and was backed into a corner. The cop knew he had messed up and tried to pressure Montre into letting it go. When Montre refused, the cop started threatening him, saying he'd write him up with tickets and take him to court, making Montre against the system. Officer, I don't, officer, that's just in there, okay? There was no gun, there was no weapon to harm you, officer. We didn't do anything wrong, we stopped at the stoplight. We pulled over when you pulled over. I did everything you asked me to, officer. You thought there was a weapon, there's no weapon, we wasn't doing anything wrong, officer. I'm not sure why you pulled me over. That's your rental, everything is fine. There is no breaking taillight or nothing, officer. I did nothing wrong with you. Let's, let's rule with each other. Did I make anything up when I said the car smelled like marijuana? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Because there is nobody there smoking in the car. Is there marijuana shake on the floor of the car? Officer, that was cigarette ash, okay? There's no, you didn't find no marijuana. I did, I'm not charging you with marijuana. I, but here's, here's what, if, if you want me to, if you want me to be real with you, like, I want you to be real with me for a second. Like, did I make that up? You know what I mean? Did I, did I just, did I make it up? I believe so, officer. Okay, so you want me to just write you the ticket for the stuff that I had to write you tickets for? If you think that I'm lying, like, then we'll go to court and we'll, we'll talk about it then. Okay. Or do you want to just be real with me and I'll be real with you? Wow, awesome. Right? Cops can use lies and tricks to get confessions, and if Montre had admitted the cop didn't make up the smell, it would have been like admitting to having illegal drugs. Luckily, Montre stuck to his story and was reluctantly let go by the cops. And then it won't make us worse. Usually when we see that, with somebody sitting there like that, like there's a gun right where you, you know what I mean? Like, I'm telling you, like, that's what happens. Okay. That's the only reason, that's the only reason that happened, is because like, you were just making it seem like something crazy is going on when it could have just been something little as that or like a bag or something like we jump automatically to what yeah i already know do you have any questions no. have a great night. all right thank you guys just days later montre sued the city and after a year-long battle settled for seventy-five thousand dollars due to the unlawful traffic stop and search the cop got taken off patrol duty but wasn't fired it's disgusting to see how a police department can keep a corrupt cop on the force, despite being caught in one of the most blatant acts of corruption ever filmed. Setting that aside, let's move on to our final case. Meet Jamal Williams, whose worst nightmare came true when he was wrongfully stopped by a cop and treated improperly. In California, Los Angeles Sheriff's deputies were searching for a burglary suspect described as a 20-year-old black male. While doing so, they ended up stopping Jamal Williams, a 40-year-old man who was just eating lunch in his car. Jamal was obviously shocked and confused because he had nothing to do with the burglary and also had a spotless record. Hey, hey, don't, hey, don't, hey, 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 don't, don't touch, don't touch, don't relax, touch, bro. Relax, hey, hey, you matched the description of somebody, okay, that just committed a burglary in the area. Okay, you're on camera, so don't worry. Is, the is, your, is, your, is, your, is your body cam on? It's on. When Williams was approached by the police, he asserted his right to remain silent and asked for a lawyer. However, the police detained him because they claimed he matched the suspect's description. A black male in his early 20s, wearing all black with a possible red t-shirt. But Jamal is actually 40 and was wearing a red hoodie and gray sweatpants, which doesn't match the description at all. Still, the police stopped and detained him based on this vague description. Being detained was already unfair, but it only got worse from there. In the minds of these two officers, Jamal was already a criminal, and they treated him that way despite having no evidence. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not stepping on the car. You're being detained for a burglary investigation, okay, sir? So step no, no, out. no, 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 no. Do you live in the area? I'm not answering questions. I want my lawyer. Okay. okay. Step out of the car. You're being detained right now. Sir. Step on out, dude. You're, sir. You're on camera, dude, so don't do anything dumb, okay? Step Hold on. Out, I'm gonna get this okay. on camera. All right. Go ahead. Let's... You can record. Step out of the car, please. At first, Jamal was calm and didn't show any aggression or resistance. He was just trying to open his phone to record the interaction for his safety. Despite this, the other cop immediately started claiming that Jamal was being aggressive. So the cops used way too much force. One officer even pulled out a taser and threatened to use it on Jamal, even though he wasn't a threat. Jamal was then handcuffed and kept face down on the tarmac while several other patrol vehicles arrived. I'm resisting. I'm just, well, why, why, why are you, why, no, man. Hey, out of the car. Get out of the car. Sir? Call your supervisor. Call hey, your supervisor. Three, three. Call, call your be, supervisor. Uh, over here on Paso Verde. Call your supervisor. We have two Call your supervisor. Call your supervisor. 
Hey, can you record this? It's recording. It's all Everybody's recorded. Got recording. We all have cameras. Good. Okay. These guys are ridiculous. Yeah, we are. There you go. Pull that sleeve up there. One, two. Huh? Let's just stand them up, right? You want to stand them up? Or put them on the side. That's Let's just recover. Just recover. Suddenly, Jamal found himself surrounded by a dozen cops, fully restrained with both handcuffs and leg wraps. Even though they had already cleared him as not being the suspect, they still took him to the patrol car and put him in the back seat. The cops had identified and cleared Jamal by running his plates, something they could have done before even approaching him. Despite being cleared of the burglary charge, Jamal was still hit with a felony, resisting arrest charge, and taken to jail. Yeah, we just pulled up on a car. I told him, hey, you're being detained for, uh, you know, a burglary investigation. You match the description of the burglary suspect, and he refused to get out. And all we did was just control holds and try to pull him out. Control holds, take down? Control holds, okay. and then, yeah, once we had him completely out of the car, then I just did a little take down. All right, have a seat in this car for now. Thank you. So I'm going to be looking for that mask specifically one more time see if it's inside the vehicle later jamal filed a formal complaint to the la sheriff's department but they investigated themselves and found no wrongdoing months later jamal filed a civil rights lawsuit against the arresting officers however a police lieutenant reviewed the case and concluded based on body cam footage that Jamal's actions made the interaction confrontational and that the officers were courteous. Jamal's charges were eventually dropped, but no charges were brought against the officers. Thank you for watching. YouTube algorithm thinks you will like this video the best. Watch and find out if it's right.